Today we're going to be covering how strong is Godzilla from the original 1954 movie Godzilla, or Gojira if you're in Japan. The sources I will be using for today's video include the movie itself, various theater programs, the Godzilla 1954 through 1999 Super Complete works, the Definite Edition Godzilla introduction, and the Toho Special Effects Movie Complete works. What are theater programs, you may be wondering? Well, to sum it all up, they're basically little movie guide books that are included with every movie when they come out in Japanese theaters. These typically come out the day the movie actually releases in Japan. Sadly, I have yet to find an English translation of any of these, but I can at least show you the pictures of them. They're typically about four pages long per guidebook, so if you know how to translate them, have a go at it. This first guidebook supposedly gives us Godzilla's runabout stats, basically his height and weight, and I guess some information on his atomic breath. The definite edition Godzilla introduction was written by Tomoyuki Tanaka himself. For those who don't know, that's the producer of the original Godzilla movie, so we will definitely be using that as a credible source. Without further ado, let's get started. To start off with, let's get Godzilla's known stats out of the way. He has a height of approximately 50 meters, or 164 feet, and a weight of 20,000 metric tons, or about 19,684 imperial tons for us westerners out there. With these stats in mind, Godzilla should be at least building level based off sheer size alone as well as the fact that he's able to obviously walk around weighing 20,000 metric tons without collapsing or falling to the floor. He's also been observed in the movie itself destroying buildings just by walking into them, basically acting as a giant walking wrecking ball. Being able to support his own weight, Godzilla should at least be able to lift 20,000 metric tons in weight. And he does that, and then some, when later in the movie there's a scene of him literally flipping over a bridge, which has been calculated to be about 25,000 metric tons. If you can't take my word for it, you can look at the link I have posted below showing the calculation feats for the bridge. Moving on to Godzilla's speed, he has a walking speed of about 8.5 miles per hour. The map, if you want to see it, will also be linked in the links below. At one point in the movie, the military launches an attack against Godzilla, which includes F-86F Sabre Jets, which can fly up to Mach 0.89. That's basically 89% the speed of sound. Godzilla nearly strikes these Sabre Jets out of the sky, meaning that yes, he can indeed react to jets that fly 89% the speed of sound. This speed alone gives Godzilla transonic reaction speed. Now we get into the juicy parts with Godzilla's durability. Probably one of the most famous examples of Godzilla's durability is the electric fence scene in the movie. This electric fence outputs 50 kilovolts per second. Godzilla endures this output for about 10 seconds before tearing through the fence like it was nothing. The calculations will be linked in the description, but this is basically 5 billion joules of energy, which equivalents to about 1.2 tons of TNT, making Godzilla building level and durability. But it doesn't stop there. After this, Godzilla proceeds to tank attacks from multiple M24 Shafi tanks and 155mm howitzer M1s, as well as the previously mentioned F-86 Saber Jets. All of these weapons individually would be at least small building level, but getting hit by all of them at once would be the equivalent of building level firepower, with Godzilla tanking all of them at once, meaning that yes, Godzilla can indeed tank building level attacks without a scratch. On top of that, Godzilla is stated numerous times in the movie to be able to endure a nuclear bomb having survived the detonation of a hydrogen bomb which created him in the first place, as shown here in this official artwork of Godzilla surviving the blast of a nuclear bomb, while the others of his kind were not so lucky. This also shows that there's something different about this particular Godzilla that makes him stronger than the rest. While he was horribly scarred from the hydrogen bomb, he was able to adapt and absorb its power, becoming stronger than ever. 
The hydrogen bomb itself being as hot as 3,000 to as hot as 4,000 degrees Celsius. Surviving this would put Godzilla at about town level in terms of durability. And this was before he was mutated by the radiation with many people in the movie implying that a nuclear bomb would do nothing to him now, and in fact actually just make him stronger. Although this may just simply be referring to the fact that Godzilla would simply heal from the radiation, and not necessarily mean that Godzilla could tank equivalent firepowers of destruction that aren't radiation-based. Such as the mother of all bombs, which is the most powerful non-nuclear-based bomb in today's technology. The only weapon capable of destroying Godzilla was the chemical weapon known as the Oxygen Destroyer, a weapon that basically removes all oxygen from surrounding water, basically liquefying everything that comes into contact with it. This weapon by its very nature bypasses conventional durability, essentially defeating Godzilla through the power of hacks, a recurring theme that we will see play out numerous times later in the series. Speaking of hacks, let's talk about Godzilla's most signature ability, his atomic breath. Imagine almost being killed by something, and then not only surviving that same something, but somehow turning it back against the one who tried to kill you. That's basically what Godzilla did, when not only did he survive the hydrogen bomb, but absorbed its power and was able to throw it back in the form of his atomic breath. This atomic breath stated to have a temperature of 100,000 degrees Celsius, which, if you're remembering the math, is way, way hotter than the hydrogen bomb explosion. That scarred him in the first place. It's reasonable to assume that Godzilla would also be able to survive his own atomic breath, seeing as how, you know, it's coming out of his body. Godzilla was originally a dinosaur that survived the extinction of the dinosaurs, Having been mutated by a bomb that is about 3,000 to 4,000 degrees Celsius and being able to produce a temperature that is 25 to 33 times that temperature output, it's reasonable to assume that in that case, Godzilla got 25 to 33 times stronger than what he originally was prior to the hydrogen bomb detonation. In the original first Godzilla movie, however, Godzilla's atomic breath is a lot different. Instead of the signature blue beam-looking attack we're used to seeing, Godzilla's atomic breath comes out more as a white-hot vapor. This first early iteration of the atomic breath is referred to as incandescent light. One can debate on whether or not the incandescent light is the same temperature output as the atomic breath, but seeing as how it has also been referred to as the atomic breath, one could argue it's just simply a visual change that they altered over time for the later movies. Godzilla first uses the incandescent light to set fire to a free ship, which has been scaled to be about 290 meters in terms of length. This feat has been calculated to be about 74 megatons of TNT, which would put Godzilla's atomic breath at city level in terms of destructive power. The math for this calculation will, of course, be in the description. Godzilla also uses this breath attack to melt steel beam towers that are over 30 meters tall. This feat has been calculated to be 23 tons of TNT. This is interesting when you remember that Godzilla has been calculated to at least have a durability equivalent of 1.2 tons of TNT. So you could make the argument that Godzilla's atomic breath is nearly 20 times stronger than his own physical durability, and therefore physical attacks as well. That's a highball argument, at least. It doesn't mean that Godzilla's atomic breath has about a 20 times multiplier to his physical attacks. But the evidence is there. This atomic breath is also large enough in size to engulf entire city blocks. Meaning, even if you don't go with the city level feat, it is definitely the city block level in terms of literally engulfing them. Another scene shows Godzilla literally boiling part of the Tokyo Bay with his atomic breath. This feat would also be calculated to be about city level. Furthermore, referring back to the freight ship destruction, a news article in the movie compares its destruction to that of a volcanic explosion, which is another city level feat. I'd say that's plenty of evidence to confirm that Godzilla's atomic breath is at least city level. If we're going from a symbolic standpoint, seeing as how Godzilla is a literal metaphor for a nuclear bomb, it makes sense for him to be at least as powerful as one. Even a low bald Godzilla is city level over time, seeing as how near the end of the movie he succeeds in leveling all of Tokyo. 
So to sum it all up, we know Godzilla at least has building level attack potency physically, ranging up to city level attack potency via his atomic breath, with transonic reaction speed being capable of moving at 8.5 miles per hour, tanking multiple building level attacks, and possibly scaling up to town and even city level in terms of durability. With all these feats in mind, Godzilla should be about town to city level overall. As a final bonus section, I will be giving my thoughts on a hypothetical power level for the original Godzilla. If you haven't already, please look at my Power Levels Explained video as I go in more in depth on what that kind of stuff even means. Being able to take building level attacks as well as he does, I'd say Godzilla's power level should probably be in about the 100 to 200 power level range. Since King Piccolo has a power level of 260 and is able to wipe out a sanity just with a wave of his hand. However, he's further able to amplify his power and produce energy attacks that are able to destroy a section of the Earth. In the Dragon Ball universe, a section is basically 1 43rd of the entire Earth, meaning that King Piccolo is 1 43rd the power to destroy the Earth. Whether this directly means that King Piccolo is country, mountain, or continent level is anyone's speculation. But that stated feat sounds much more impressive than the city level feats that the original Godzilla peaks at. Essentially meaning in order to match King Piccolo's physical power, Godzilla would need to use his strongest energy attack, the Atomic Breath. This leads me to assume that Godzilla's Atomic Breath is probably about equal at least to King Piccolo's physical power, being 260. So Godzilla physically should be weaker than his Atomic Breath, probably being a good comfortable tier below 260. With this in mind, I'd say that a high ball power level for the original Godzilla is probably only around 200, while low balled Godzilla is probably only around 100. This means that at his weakest, the original Godzilla is still comparable to Pilaf Saga Kid Goku when he turns into a great ape near the end of that arc. And at his strongest, the original Godzilla is probably comparable to Kid Goku prior to the Ultra Divine Water, as well as the elderly King Piccolo prior to restoring his youth, both of those power levels ranging between 180 and 260. But believe it or not, there actually is a Godzilla that exists in the Dragon Ball anime. But that's a story for another day. I take no credit for any of these calculations made by other people. I'm just simply spreading the word. I'm putting all the sources, again, in the link below. Please look at them, because these guys put a lot of hard work into these calculations, and it's insane, quite frankly. I try to be as accurate as possible when I do these kind of videos. Next time, we'll cover the Showa Godzilla. And believe me, if you thought the original Godzilla was scary, you haven't seen anything yet. The power scaling's about to shoot through the roof. We're talking Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z levels of power jump. Given the vast number of Showa movies we have to go through, I'm gonna break this into parts. Next time, we will be covering the 1955 movie Godzilla Raids Again, and going all the way through to 1967's Son of Godzilla, essentially covering the first decade of the Showa Godzilla. With that, I hope you all enjoyed this first part of the Godzilla Power Scale series. Stay tuned for more.